Effective immediately, Chief Creative Officer of Global Force Wrestling, Jeff Jarrett, has been placed on an immediate leave of absence. This is BQ, and I do this for the Global Force Wrestling fans. Well, how about instead of focusing on those yahoos, you focus yourself on Eli Drake? Now, it wasn't too long ago on my podcast that I stated that this was the first Bound for Glory in at least two to three years without any kind of drama or controversy. I said that this was finally the time that we could just enjoy the build to the show and then enjoy the pay-per-view. The initial report that came out today regarding Jeff Jarrett and his indefinite leave of absence seemed that perhaps he was taking time off due to personal issues. Now I was talking to my good friend today, Mike Mills. You may know him from the Booking the Territory podcast. And he mentioned, because we were talking back and forth, could be health issues, could be marital issues, God forbid family issues like a death in the family. My initial reaction was, hey, the guy has been working himself to the bone the last several months. Maybe he just needs some time off. I've been excited with just about everything Jeff Jarrett has done. And as I've stated many times, if you watch the Global Force Amped Anthology, I 100% feel that that would have been a clear-cut number two promotion in professional wrestling ahead of TNA and Ring of Honor. All Jeff Jarrett has ever wanted to do was live his dream and run a competitive wrestling promotion he has had as many faults but a lot of his decisions in my opinion have been unfairly crapped on because all he was trying to do was provide an alternative to the wwe and with that comes hits and misses pwi further stated that after meeting with ed nordholm this morning that a decision was made by ed on what he considered to be erratic behavior which included heated arguments backstage and weight gain they noted that he was stumbling down the steps. It was either up or down at Triple Mania. Now, the article didn't cite any, you know, substance abuse or anything along those lines. But Jeff does strike me as a type of guy who probably sleeps three or four hours a night because he's so dedicated to this brand. Jeff has gone to war and been the face of controversy when perhaps Ed Nordholm should have taken the blame in many of these cases. Now, the article mentions the great lengths that they went to to make Alberto El Patron a surprise appearance at Impact. And Ed Nordholm tweeted out the picture that morning of him in the ring with Jeff, which basically ruined the surprise. Now, I'll tell you, as someone who was at the Impact Zone that night, the place was still electric when he came out, but that's neither here nor there. Ed Nordholm has the potential to do Dixie Carter-like damage without guys like Jeff Jarrett in the fold. Rumor has it that the GFW merger is not fully in place and that if Jeff Jarrett hypothetically were to see his exit from the company, that he could legally take the Global Force Wrestling name with him. Then the company would be in a huge mess. The creative team still, to be, still seems to be intact. Cornette appears to still be in the fold as well as Kevin Sullivan. But a lot of that could potentially change. The problem is that they did a marathon set of tapings and we're going to see Jeff Jarrett on our TV quite a bit in the next couple of months leading up to Bound for Glory, just like we're seeing low key right now. Myself and my co-host, Ro the Great, were talking the other day and said we really hope that nothing else happened during these tapings similar to the low key situation where it doesn't reflect on TV, but we're still seeing that character each and every week. We had no idea it was going to be Jeff Jarrett of all people. Karen Jarrett is expected to stand by her husband through this. I do like Karen. Sometimes her on-screen role is a little much, but it would be the professional wrestling is a funny place because if Karen were still married to Kurt Angle, she'd be the most over spouse in professional wrestling. Douchebags such as Shane Helms and Rebby Hardy are basking in Jarrett's misfortune, which further accentuates their desire to take the low road. And maybe show us that they aren't the best people in the world. In my personal opinion, anyone who wishes failure on someone or enjoys their misfortune is not a good human being. That's just me. I want to know what you guys think in the comments about the situation with Jeff Jarrett. I believe in Jeff Jarrett. I trust in Jeff Jarrett. I trust that this is not a long-term thing. We're just going to have to see how this plays out in the coming days. It's not good for the company for this to be something that drags on over the long term. I think Jeff has a great vision for this company. And if, as I stated, if he were to see his exit, this could do major damage 
because they may have to rebrand all over again, something that would be very difficult to bounce back from. I want to know what you guys think. Please hit subscribe on the channel. Thanks for listening, Global Force Wrestling fans.